I'm currently working on Mary J. Blige's record here at Germano Studios, uh, which is probably the best new studio in New York and features two dualities. Germano Studios is uh, probably, well, certainly the, the best new studio in New York in years, but uh, more importantly, it's, been, it's built by somebody who knows how to build a studio, somebody who's been in the studio business for generations, literally, and it's as good as all of that pedigree you would indicate. Started in 1986 uh, working as a tea boy I guess for uh, Nile Rogers in a place called Skyline Studio. Uh, from that point I worked with Nile for a few years and then jumped off in the early 90s uh, and I guess the first big thing I worked on was Mariah Carey's first record which I mixed about I think four songs on and through the early 90s I worked a lot on uh, what was most present in New York at the time which was hip-hop. I worked a bit with uh, Puff Daddy and people like that and uh, latched on with a band called They Might Be Giants around that time as well and I've been working with them ever since producing a lot of their records. Um, lately I guess I've been working a lot with David Byrne uh, who I just mixed a record he did with Brian Eno this past year just do it quite well and uh, left over I suppose from the era I worked a lot on hip-hop was uh, working with Mary J. Blige uh, which is what I've been doing here at uh, Germano the last couple weeks. I was lucky enough to start towards the end of the old studio construct I guess so I, I, I uh, if I trace back through that tree of, of work I can trace most of it back to some relationship from my first, from the work at the studio I started at, so um, even They Might Be Giants was from there, and the Mariah thing, and the Mary Jake thing came through Queen Latifah, who I used to work with at Skyline. So it, it's it's all it all sort of connects back. Uh, David Byrne also through some of that time. So and those are people I've just mentioned because I've been working with them quite a bit for most of them over ten years, and some as much as twenty. So there are far better engineers than I, but if you actually have take the time to listen to the client and actually f figure out what they want and tailor what you do to what they want. It's, it's going to be a lot more useful to you than just doing what you do and waiting for them to come around to your way of thinking. So it, it's, a, it's in, in short, I guess it's personality, whatever that is, it, it's, you try and, it, try and integrate your personality with whoever you're working with so you can help them. You know, but if you're if you're a little too rigid in what you do or a little too standoffish about what you want, it's, it's a lot. It, it's not as productive and the music's not as good. You know, I like music, but I'm, I'm really bad at playing it, so I'm, I'm more than happy to, to use my, my desire to play music to make somebody else do it well. <laughs> I, I am much more useful, I think, to bands that already have, a, have a, a, an idea of who they are, who they've been, and who they want to be. It's much easier to sort of. I guess I'm more. I'm better at steering than than creating mm -hmm. a band, or you know, or molding a band. I'm much better at at sort of gently nudging the the meteor to not hit the earth, rather than actually carving up the meteor and creating it in the first place. It, when I produce, I'm I'm coming from the. Usually, I'm hired as somebody who is already involved in some fashion as an engineer. So my production is is I, I'm not uh, I'm generally helping with song song structure and things like that but I'm not I'm not writing songs with them I'm not you know I'll crack the whip with with different takes and with different performances but uh, it's it's uh, my my production is is coming more from the traditional engineer side of like a Neil Dorsman or somebody who who works with with artists as as an engineer making them sound as good as they can driving them to do as good a job as they can but not going going home with them and and asking how they feel today and what what shall we write about or something you know but uh, I mean it's a, it, you know, the range of production style is as you know is so huge I, but these days it involves writing a beat sometimes and I don't mm. I don't do that that's not what I do so I, I work with usually an artist or a band and try and help them do help them achieve what they want to achieve technically if you actually are a fan of a particular artist and you let that get in the way while you're working with that particular artist that that could be a, a difficulty but being a fan of music I don't think it's ever going to be a, a problem for making music 
you know, it's it's it enthusiasm and and actual excitement working is great. I mean, there are one of the things working with Mary. I don't do a lot of I mean, most of the time when I'm working with her. I'm, I I do I've done occasional mixing for her and other things, but most of it is working with her singing. So I when I started, we used to talk about how you 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 know you clean the toilets and do the phones and whatever for that minute or two in the studio where you get that incredible rush of being there for something that no one else has seen yet or will ever see sometimes and I you know Mary's one of the few artists that I still get that from where you where you just feel like you're just there for something really unique and that's that's the kind of that's the kind of enthusiasm that that artists enjoy you know it, it's palpable you can actually feel that everyone feels it and you know, if you're not getting that anymore, and that's that's part of the problem with a lot of things being solitary now with computers and all, it's it's difficult to have that interaction as much. I don't have any specific checklist of okay, now we now we go get coffee, but it's it mostly revolves around getting comfortable. However, that has to happen, and and usually it is conversational. Sometimes it means going out and having a pint, or sometimes it means sitting there and listening relentlessly to their demos and finding the, the kernels of things that are useful and that, that sort of thing. But it's not, a, it's not a process that I think about in that sense. I guess the sessions I have enjoyed the most have been ones I've done with people I know really well. Uh, so working, I think as I mentioned, with They Might Be Giants for years, uh, I know them really well, they're good guys, and, and we're always trying to do something different um, because we've been doing stuff together for so long, it's it's you know, we're a lot more open to trying different things, making their records. So I, I feel very comfortable with them to to suggest things that maybe I wouldn't with somebody who I've just started working with. Likewise, uh, David Byrne is is incredibly willing to just judging you can tell by his career that he he's always willing to try some different things. He's he's a an artist as well as you know. A, visual artist as well as a, a musical artist and so he's he's very open to suggestion both musical and just style wise to what we're working on. Uh, I, I've actually been lucky enough to work with a lot of the people I would have wanted to work with you know in some capacity even as an assistant or whatever uh, so but <laughs> well this is a, a shameless a shameless SSL plug. I would have loved to work with Peter Gabriel, of course, but <laughs> and actually the the 22 year old me starting out would have wanted to work with Peter Gabriel as well. So that's a that's one thread that's constant. But uh, in terms of, um, I mean, people I've actually gotten the chance. I mean, when I was at uh, at Skyline, we there was this sort of run of people. I, I actually was a fan of They Might Be Giants before I worked, worked with them, and uh, also the replacements came through back then. Um, and I it was just around for it, but it, it, there was a lot of that sort of, and we were very fortunate, a lot of really great things came through that I, you know, B-52s, and Nile was fantastic, I wanted to work with Nile. You know, there, I worked on, I was an assistant on a James Taylor record years ago that, you know, I, I, I love his music, but I've never, I, as a person, I'm a huge fan. He was such a, it was one of the most fun sessions I've ever worked on. All of those guys were, it was just like, you know, your your body hurt from laughing so hard. We had a, a great time, you know. And he obviously is a, a pro. He knows, gets his work done. But he's he knows that it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to suck to be in the studio. The thing about Nile Rodgers that everyone thinks they know, but have really no idea about, is that everyone thinks that he's a, a great producer and musician, and they actually have no idea how great a musician and producer he is. They have he is. The, the amount of work he puts in, the dedication he has, the specific and detailed knowledge he has about all manner of music and performance is, is vastly larger than people give him credit for, and he gets plenty of credit for what he does, but it's uh, spending time with the guy and realizing how, how, I guess, underrated he is in all those areas is it's almost disappointing, you know, but you know, he's certainly been, you know, had his success, but it's not, it's, uh, he deserves it, I guess is all I'm saying. The, one of the most important things I learned from Niall, which I, I didn't learn well, I guess, is, is the incredible confidence in what he's doing. You know, he's, he's, however many people, I mean, 
he he's open to and aware of you know whatever criticism or or downside of things he's working on that that may be out there but when he's focused on doing something and actually uh, delivering some sort of product or project for an artist he is supremely confident and he will he'll sell it to you you know in a in a in a simple way he's not not a pitch man per se but he he's good at he he certainly believes in what he's doing and he's good at letting you know why you know and that's important you know it, it there is a there is an element of sales to, to to production in particular i mean on the engineering side you can tell somebody the snare is great sounding all you like but if they don't like it they don't like it. you know there's a taste element involved there's a taste element in production of course too but it there's there's a way of you know his way of making that uh making you realize what he's trying to do and why it will work is it, it was incredibly uh sophisticated in in its own way say the difference between uh uh a purely digital uh, environment and and one that integrates some analog, like this console. It, it, it I've I've actually gotten very comfortable with the digital environment. I'm very comfortable with even staying in the box for some projects and some uh, parts of projects. But there is a there is a benefit uh, from it. Even even to uh, export things in stems, to even, even have as, as few as 8 or 16 channels of stems going through some analog chain or some analog console like, like the duality is that it, there is a you kind of, it lets things warm up in more individual way that, that kind of integrates better later to me, but um, it's a, I don't view the duality as a purely analog console that way. I mean, you, you ask, you know, what, why, why an analog console, and I, it, it makes me sort of blink because I need to go look over here and make sure we're talking about the same console. I, I, I'm, I'm as appreciative of the digital uh, capabilities of this console as I am the analog. The analog is sort of a foregone conclusion to me with SSL because that's what they do. Uh, having worked on some of their previous digital things, I, that's the area that I thought was was more in uh, question and now I think that really made the digital side of this much more uh, up to par you know and and, and incredibly uh, useful and easy to get around on. I, I guess I, I take for granted that that a console of this of this caliber will do what it says it will do and I guess in a way that's not always true, but for this console it is. Everything it says it does, it does and it does well. So it hasn't made my life easier because it does exactly what I expect it to do. I will make a record that has, uh, I guess, I'll listen to you. <laughs> I won't always agree with you, but I'll listen to you. You won't leave feeling like you've been pushed into something you don't want to do.